and hello movie lovers so tonight i have diego silva with me tonight and it's a pleasure to actually have him on the show but you know what you guys you guys can show us a little bit of class here go and hit smash that subscribe button on the bottom right hand corner also to the bell to allow you guys to have know when we have something new coming out also to rate us on apple Podcasts and also to on spotify and of course on good pods as well and that just allows new audiences to be able to check us out and be able to find us just like how you guys are watching or listening to us right now. So with further ado, we're going to get on with the show. And like I said, I got Diego here. And man, it's been a while. It's been a minute since we've actually got a chance to talk and everything. But this time we're face to face. I'm not in a car sweating my butt off or anything like that in 90 degree weather. I'm in here in the house. How you been doing, man? Good, good. It, it is uh, a long time for real. Yes, I'm, I'm also just on the phone, right? Right. It was just on the phone, just audio podcasting. And that's it. It's good to actually see you face to face and being able to just talk to you. By the way, happy birthday. I know today's your birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you you're so, so much. You're very welcome. And now you have a newborn and, well, not newborn, but new to the people that are listening that knows that you have a, a child and everything now, too. Yes. So I just want to say congratulations to you face to face on that as well. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. So we're here to talk about hunting souls this is your new baby this is your new project and mm -hmm. i i gotta tell you i watched the film last night i had to be honest with you my most shocking moment of that movie was when the girl is over there trying to get her paper and then all of a sudden something just knocks her out the window almost okay. uh, i mean it i was like i was laying in bed but at the same time i'm like oh my god what's gonna happen to this kid <laughs> yeah. this whole entire moment i was more scared for the kid than i was the parents or anything like that in that kind of atmosphere but you guys you did a really good job there was a lot of sacrifices that Thank were met you so you're very welcome and i know there's like a lot of sacrifices that were made and everything but go ahead and share some light onto how this project came to be and what inspired you to make this film well uh this i was working uh doing tv and all of that for a while, I did six years with a company. And then uh, I was writing every time I was going home, you know, like at night I was uh, tired, but I was wanting to have this idea. So I started like creating um, all the questions that I was having about dreams, about uh, astral projection um, and the paranormal things I was, generating questions and answers and I was creating this script step by step so basically it's like my own answers to questioning that I was having it you know like right I don't know if sounds right but it's it's more like that like uh I was creating my history at my story more with a yes imagine how is this and that I was having a sleep paralysis sometimes, uh, but I never get to do uh, astral projection. I was liking that theme, like I was looking for it and all of that, but I never did. So I was just imagining it. Okay. And uh, here's another thing though, man, like people don't realize that there's so much that goes into horror films where it's actually more psychological in the way you're thinking your own mental health and stuff like that too because here's the thing with horror movies there's a there's actually that mental health of certain things and that can actually help people whenever they're watching horror movies and people don't realize that that horror movies can help people more than they can scare people yeah, yeah. it's fun to be scared but it's also fun to actually have something to where you can only where you can fight your own mental health because maybe a character might be related or you can actually relate to something that's going on within the film to actually help you with your own mental state though too so that's something that i want to really bring up is the fact that you have this girl that's in this this little girl that's inside this movie she's going through things and her dad is basically the hero of the film because of the fact that she's always calling for him but people go through this almost every single day, goes through some stuff like this almost every single day, if you think about it, whenever you're dealing with nightmares 
and your your own anxieties and your own insecurities can go a long way because when you're in that dream state, you're the most vulnerable person there is and stuff like that. So people can actually relate to a certain aspect of it. I know I did because of the fact I did have sleep, sleep terrors back in 2016, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I was having uh, more is like nightmares that I was uh, not letting me sleep. Uh And I was having like lucid dreams, and I was um, I don't know how you call it in English. <laughs> It's not my first language, but when you no, no, no. walk is sleeping, uh, walk yeah, sleeping. like sleepwalking. <laughs> It's yeah. sleepwalking, yeah. So I, I once I got into the shower, and but that I think all of that was just a stress, was just uh situations that i was going in in my mind at that time so uh like you said that can be part of your mindset your state and all of that you know when you are exactly. so stressful you can create more things or i don't know the 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 mindset can play with you you know exactly because here's the thing we're creators of our own insecurities our own anxieties We put things in our own heads by overthinking certain situations to the point that there could be of a psychological standpoint, maybe we're putting this own demon in our own heads because we're our own worst enemies. You know what but, I mean? But yeah. if you think about it, um, it's, an, uh, it's the way that we actually create horror because uh, how I create horror is just playing with your mind. So mm -hmm. if I create a silent and, and I put a, a noise, you are imagining the rest exactly. so even if I, if i'm not putting anything in the screen i'm just uh, putting an example you know not necessary has to be something on the screen to be scared even when it's just a noise and as uh, not showing something that right. is creating in your mind that imagination is playing and is making you be terrified of nothing so exactly and you did that i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest with you man you did that with me because you know why okay there's this one scene where the guy's looking the father's looking on the computer right yeah. and then you see a little shadow pass through it but then i'm looking all through this whole entire thing of, of looking for something in the background <laughs> the whole time. I'm looking for something because you implanted that there yeah. for me to look. It's, it's just uh, it's language of camera, you know, so playing with the camera and um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say things without telling too much of the movie, you know, but uh, playing with the camera, I'm trying to go to um, make you feel some feelings. That's that's why I did the test with guns. Before Hunting Souls, I did guns. And what I was doing is just a test that isn't letting me play with you, your mind in five minutes, generating different kind of feelings. So that was uh, helping me to be ready for this movie, you know, for to create yeah, just those. Little small baby steps. Yeah. Yeah, I get that because, like I here's the thing: you want to start off small with something and see if you have something there. So yeah. doing something like a small project, like you mentioned, and then trying to figure out what, how you want to do your next project and testing it out that way is actually the best way to go about it. That way, you know that you have something or not. And I gotta say, I'm a huge fan of camera angles whenever I'm looking at something, and I love how you give the full details of stuff everything you have this wide range of knowing how to actually use your camera angles as a character versus just letting it be a camera angle yeah and stuff like that especially when you're telling the story of the of this ghost this being and everything and you don't actually see it you see like little small things that's not even revealed in the first five minutes of the movie you see a claw in some parts of the film and then after that you wind up seeing the reveal like towards the end of it and that's something i really like is the fact that you don't show us everything you tease it here and there and then there's also not no cheap jump scares either it's not jump scares for the sake of it having jump scares you actually legit make us be on the edge of our seats and everything you, and man. that's something you're very welcome 
because I actually understand it. I mean, then let me just tell you the actress that played the uh, the let me think here. She's was actually the person that was investigating the parents. Okay, Karen. Yeah, Karen. She did a. Uh, I'm gonna tell you that actress did a really good job of me being ticked off at her, <laughs> especially the part where she goes, "Does Daddy uh, use your take off your pajamas and stuff?" I'm like, yeah. "You." I'm like, I wanted to be. I was just like that character, just like the yeah. father, and everything. And the mother's like, "Nah, just let him be and everything. It'll be fine." And I'm like, "No, you need to go down there." Oh, no, I, I'm like. I, I really appreciate that you are saying those things, you know, because when I'm writing, I'm just like trying to think how this girl can piss off some people, you know, like she pissed me uh, off because, big time. It, yes, because it's like um, I'm trying to construct all the difficulties for the lead and to get to the point of determination. And he has he he's willing to do everything for his family. So. I'm I'm putting him through the limits, you know. Uh, so part of that is 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 the social services. Uh, so she's just saying some stuff, but it's like little things that you are like getting mad. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> and the mother is just so calm and collect. It just goes to show you the difference between men and women. Because yeah. women are like. <laughs> You know what? We're just gonna let this be for now and let her have her own little powwow and see how this goes. Us men, we're like, no, we need to go in there now. We need to see what's going on. <laughs> so there's a difference between men and women in this movie that you actually give out and everything. I really do appreciate that. Um, Crichton Films actually said something too. He says hello, my to my favorite director, favorite podcaster. You have a great talent for making the visions in your mind and come to the big screen. Thank you. And uh, he's definitely right. The writing in this movie is really good. I was, you know, I was, um, I didn't want a, a jumpy movie. And it's right. interesting that you said, uh, I was wanting to be more into um, what is the love, what the father will do, and, and how I can turn an history having suspense. Because I love more the suspense than psychological and be jumping, jumping. But I was not wanting to do jumps that are just classic jumps. So I was like, try to get you. It starts a little bit slow and is going increment step by step, and it's taking you to a a zone that I was wanting to be until is in despair, and then you are like, now what? And keep going more and then all of a sudden everything changed and you are like so now what <laughs> is it <laughs> i'm trying to explain it without spoiling it it's spoil. it's hard <laughs> yes. i understand man but but that just goes to show you that you love your psychological horror basically yeah. like how james wan does it where it gives you that slow build and yeah. it gives you that tension build and then once that tension is built, it gets released within the like the last few minutes of the film. And that's what I love about James Wan's uh, Conjuring, first two Conjuring films. Yeah, And that's also what I like about this oh, as well. You. You're very welcome. Because I like psychological thinking. And also, too, the way you use things in this film, too. You let the audience go for the ride versus, and you don't let the, you don't tell them everything. You let the audience figure things out, try to figure things out for themselves on what's going on here. And that's yeah. something I really do appreciate because nowadays directors just go on ahead and want to show everything. Like, no, we're not, stu don't treat us like we're idiots. Just go on ahead, give us the film that you want to put out, tell the story you want to put into it, and do it that way, and we'll follow along. We're, we're going to try and put the pieces together. Do not try and put the pieces together for us. And that's something I really like that you do. That's that's great to hear because when I was writing it, you know, you have some people around you that is uh, giving you advice and they have uh, more experience. And sometimes they were like, you have to explain this a little bit more. You have to explain this. And I was like, mm, I don't know if if I'm not, as an audience, I want them telling me this, you know. So and and even. At the end, I want people to think about it. And if it's neat, go back 
and analyze some pieces that is into the language and to the all the dialogue and they will figure it out you know like it's interesting to see if they can figure it and and they can have two endings with the same thing so um, most definitely and i definitely like that aspect to it to be honest with you i think it's great on what you're doing i'm thinking you know this this film is really good and also to be honest with you i didn't even rent it i bought it thank you bought Thanks. that on and a matter of fact i actually bought that on apple so that way i can go ahead and watch it anytime i wanted to and you're very mm -hmm. welcome i'm a big supporter in, in supporting indie director or stuff like that too so if i'm able to just drop 10 bucks on a film and the trailer sells me i'm gonna i'm gonna help out that indie director because of the fact it's so hard to actually put your own work into something and people don't realize this yeah. there's a lot of sacrifices being made you have yeah. to try and get a startup going. And if you don't get the startup going or anything like that for the budget, you can't pay the people that are involved with the film. You can't, um, you're not able to get funding for anything. Then it's on the back burner for God, for like maybe four or five years before you can even get it off the ground. Before you know it, you're actually doing little small things to be able to get that off the ground. Yeah. So my, and I know they uh, also too having a child also too is uh, was also hard at the same time as trying to do what you wanted to do as well. Yes, like, it, it was really really hard to do this movie. Uh, first of all, it's an an independent uh, film, but uh, we I was planning on shooting before my my child was born, so I was thinking on having the post production while he's born so it will be different i can be at home and edit and you know because i was thinking i have this money i will put it all in production and i will be on charge of post-production and i will try to do my best for for the final product and what happened is that we are in my house with all the people doing the prepping ready to shoot two days before because it was uh uh friday and we were starting monday so we are doing the camera prep checking that everything is working lighting um we got everything around the house you know and all of a sudden uh trump said the country should so we are shutting down and i'm like okay i pay the the rent of the equipment i have all these people uh, I called SAG and said, look, I cannot shoot. And they said, okay, so you have to pay the actors even if you're not shooting. And I'm like, oh, so, so I'm paying the movie, but I'm not having a movie. And they were like, practically like, yeah, that's, you have the contracts. You know, that, that was the first moment. And it's like, everything falls in pieces, you know, like, obviously, uh, uh, I was not the only one in the situation, so it was good that at least um, everybody was. I mean, this was pandemic. Was this not was not me trying to get rid of a contract, you know? So they understood. And then when everybody's saying the same, and the at the end, I didn't have to pay the actors. But the first moment is like you are losing money. And you will pay everything and you are and and plus that i i quit to my job to do the movie you know so wow i i was six years working for a network i got the emmys with them i got all right. these things and i'm i'm quitting to my job to do this and this happened obviously i cannot go back and say hey i'm sorry uh, you know, <laughs> it's like, oops, my bad. You know, yes, this didn't oops. pan out the way I want. <laughs> I uh, can know. I get my job back? <laughs> you know, right. Because it's, and it's hard, man. It really is. I mean, my, uh, another director I know is also having a hard time with his funding and everything too. And also too, you have to pay out of pocket. Therefore, the production cost goes down less. Therefore, now you have to do double funding or triple the funding. Yeah. So you can pay the actors because you don't know how long you're going to be. They're going to be out of work with this whole entire, this situation that we were in. No, and time. plus that, and plus that, we passed the pandemic and we come back. I started, and somebody on set was with COVID. That was the first AD, and and 
I got the the COVID because it was my first AD was next to me all the time. So I have to shut down production again. And then one more time, losing money and then coming back. Um, I'm just a little bit stubborn that I was having in my mind. I have to do this. I want to create something different. I, I, I was wanting to create something where uh, it's, it's not from a book. It's not from a franchise. Original story. You know, I was original and I was wanting to do it. So, and and I try in my in my terms. I was like, this is what I want to tell. If it's bad, okay, I will take it. It was my fault, you know. Right. So, the way I wrote it, because people were saying you should change this, and I was like, mm, I believe in this story. I, I I want to share it like this. So I will go with with my thoughts and. Let's see what happened. If I lose, I lose in my terms, and I will, I will learn. <laughs> Obviously, right. it's a, a big project, a, a big process, and we are learning. But I needed to try it at least, you know. Right. It's like, I, look, I I rather feel it uh, trying than not try at all, basically. Yes. And if I happen to feel, let me feel on my own terms and let me learn from my mistakes versus you guys, I understand and I appreciate the help, but let me try and do this on my own. This is my passion project. Let me try and do my thing is basically what you're trying to do. And well, I'm, I'm considering ideas, but, but if I feel like it's going, it's changing just because this is the commercial way to make it work. Uh, that's not enough uh, for me to change it. I, I need to feel that that what you are telling me is true. You know, like this is not working just because it's not commercial. That's not. That's not. It's not about the commercial. It's about yeah. the art of it. It's about yeah. your storytelling. If you say and, to me, this right. doesn't work because the character or this, you know, like something. Okay, that's different. Okay, I will think about it. I will process, you know. But right. if you said this is just not commercial, well, I'll, let's see. It, it may right. be commercial. <laughs> exactly, because here's the thing. You know how those characters move. You know how those characters talk. You know how they interact with each other. And if one line of dialogue is off, you're going to know that that one line of dialogue is off. And that's not something that the character would say or anything like that. So therefore, you know, you're comfortable with uh, with the, anything that you're doing and then if you change it and everything for the sake of changing it and things like that it can throw the whole entire project off yeah too. but even you know. even with even with um you know english is not my first language so with the actors they were wanting to change words i can understand if they change something so it sounds more from here but i was taking care of the meaning is the same. It's not changing the subtext. It's not changing the the meaning of the you know the you scene. It's keeping the same original head. context. Yes. Right. And you know, I have to say this, Diego. I mean, we talked about this before about language and stuff like that on the original on the back in uh, whenever we first started off, whenever I first started off, rather. But you know. Here's the thing. Your English is fantastic, and okay. you're, I'm able, and also too, to adapt it from the script over into the dialogue. I'm a, I'm understanding the cohesiveness of the whole entire thing of how it sticks together. Thanks. The dialogue to me flows perfectly, and it, and I'm actually understanding it. And also too, I can definitely tell that you're trying to put a little bit of your your spin on certain things, especially whenever you're looking at the legend of the ghost, stuff like that too, because of the fact that different cultures believe in different things. And I'm like, okay, so this is actually probably from his ethnic background in a sense. And he's putting it in a terms, how we see things in our own way, but it's yeah. just named differently because each person has a name for different types of beings and everything too. I was creating some stuff that are from my culture. Like at the beginning, just let's start with the conversation in the car going to the to the hospital. 
to me uh, when we dream with a person sometimes in in my culture sometimes it's the person saying bye you know or or um is dying and he's saying goodbye so that was something that my wife was like that's not i mean they she was not knowing about that and i was like i want to keep that even when that doesn't make sense or something for some people in here but uh this is to share a little bit of of culture you know so i, I like that though to, yeah because it makes me think on a on a whole new level though too it's like i'm learning who you are as a director but also too learning who these characters are for the first time too yeah and things like that on what they pick up so i like that how you did that to be honest with you it makes it more real to me Thank it you. makes these characters more real and like i said the love and the this is basically a love story for the for the between father and daughter yeah think about it yeah yeah. Which is something I really like. You definitely grab the father and daughter aspect to it. The mother yeah. kind of takes the back seat a little bit because of the fact that the father is the protector. You know, and I was. Um, uh, they always said that you have to put a girl to be a scare, and I was like, I want to play with the dad. Uh, why not try a different formula? I know the girls um, works because people feel that is more vulnerable so if you put a Schwarzenegger against um a ghost maybe the ghost is scared of him you know so right. <laughs> but i was wanting to try to create that so uh and i was wanting to create it between the father and the daughter and even i love the the line where the daughter said uh they said how your father see your soul and she said because he loved me that's that was showing touching. that was showing how much connection can be between a father and a daughter without being something bad you know like we but as also parents too, yeah go ahead but also too man it goes way beyond that though too on not a physical level but on a spiritual level though on too because it's because yeah. it's her soul right so she's the so he's protecting her soul from this demon and being that protector for her even in her, her dreams so yeah. it goes way beyond the physicality of it it goes into the spiritual realm of it too where you can feel some range some emotion to it and that's something i liked with that thank you i was just wanting to use love as a motivation so when you are in love with something, you will do crazy things. So <laughs> we do. We <laughs> us guys will do crazy things. You can even ask yes. my fiance. Yes. And everything too. <laughs> but because I go above and beyond whenever she tells me not to do something. But still <laughs> I do it. But yeah, we'll do just about anything for love. Whenever you look at us guys and everything. But you know, I feel like too the mother's also a tough woman though, even though she takes kind of the back a little bit but at the same yes. time she's tough i was just trying to see i mean he's an engineer and he's like everything should make sense she's more believer so it's hard for her because it's like almost he's bullying her every time that that she sees something so we can see it at the beginning when she's seeing something and he comes ha to the house and she doesn't want to share with him is because is that that relationship where yes uh, you love your your uh, husband and wife love each other but you still have some stuff that you don't want to share uh because uh religion or belief you know so i was wanting to play that a little bit in there so she feels a little bit alone alone until he's understanding that this is different and he becomes a believer you know i like how he goes from not believing in the dreams and stuff like that and analyzing dreams to that and even the wife calls him out on it because yeah. why all of a sudden you're believing in all this and now you're wanting to do all this other stuff and 
if it wasn't for his friend, and I like how his friend, even though he doesn't believe in it also, he knows that his friend is actually telling the truth, that there's something more to it. And most people would actually say, you know what, man, I'm going to go on ahead. We're going to go for a ride. We're going to put you in a padded room, and that'll be the end of it. But him, <laughs> but his friend is this caring, charismatic character who was like, like, you know what, man, I hear you. I hear what you're going through. You're missing work. Let me help you out. And let me help you get through this somehow. And my girlfriend happens to analyze dreams. So maybe watch a couple of YouTube videos, see if you got something from that. If not, we can actually dig deeper. So I like that aspect of how you use the YouTube stuff because it makes it more present and everything to where they can do the research. I like how it researches stuff off of Google. I like how it actually feels real me because that's actually what we would do we would actually research it off of google we would research stuff like this off of youtube and stuff like that and base it off of that and if we don't get results what do we do we turn to an actual person to an actual source to actually help us so i like that I, it makes those characters even more real makes them stand out a lot more thank you yes uh we we always need like um in dubs needs uh, the support so he's playing that support because he he cannot be weak and in, in front of his wife you know they his character is not weak so he's always pretending even in the car is the only way that he shows and release when he scream yells mm -hmm. is the only moment that he's really really uh, releasing all that internal uh you know, because he doesn't want to show anything to the rest. So he's suffering internally until he decides, decide like, okay, I cannot go against this anymore. I mean, I have to do something. But um, what I'm, I'm playing is that is like, you can be around people and you can look like you are so unique, like your family can be so unified, but at the end you have holes in there and you can be alone you know so how those things can work to make it like more real uh, and trying to play a different thing because normally couples has confrontation and that confrontation is playing very well for the movie mm -hmm. but in this case they are supporting each other so it's kind of weird because it's a uh, under confrontation, but it's not a, a, a phys, uh, like it's like it's on underneath right. confrontation. Not very. Not... Yeah, I got you. Not uh, on the physical and also too on the on the outside of looking things too. Yeah. Well, I get what you're saying, and you know another thing too is this demon is not just fighting his spiritual side or anything like that. But his physicality, though, too, because I here's the thing. Whenever I see child services come up again for the second time, my first instinct was like that demon summoned her at the right time. That's that was my what I was thinking whenever child services came in that first time, mm -hmm. about the second time at their house after that incident, which I'm not going to get into or anything like that. But whenever they had that incident, all of a sudden she comes in. Right. And I'm like, that demon probably summoned her at the right time. There's something spiritual that went on ahead and went through that realm to pull her in there at that exact time in that exact location. Because it's yes. trying to divide the family because they she, because that demon knows that if he can get rid of the father, it's easy pickings for the daughter and um, for the mother. And also, uh, that's why he's hunting souls. Is he's a hunter, and he is. Uh, it's a, a small piece where I'm talking about his background, and when you really listen, what is in there, it's explained that he he's playing. So it's not just it's not just going straight. It's he enjoys going step by step and you know seeing those uh, because when when demons like she said they are classified by domain so they are playing some 
things that are taking your your um, strength, like playing games to to get you to some situations. So <laughs> I'm trying to talk no, without no. giving the plot or anything, you know. So it's, it's very hard. The movie. Here's the thing, as a movie reviewer, that's easy to do, but it's your project, so it's actually hard to actually not spoil anything. Yeah, you know what I mean? I don't but, yeah. want to spoil anything. But um but yeah, so um he's he's finding the the family and he knows how to be going step by step and and take care, you know, like so that's the big deal, how they have to protect how they can protect each other and i like how they do protect each other to be honest with you i think that they did a very good job at portraying that in the movie and everything too and i like and also too it goes into the spirituality realm it goes into the dark realms it goes it ca you captured everything that needed to be told in the story to be honest with you. and i like the fact that you didn't make this two it could easily been a two-hour film but this movie didn't even feel like an hour and some more minutes to be honest with you and speaking of the cake and everything, I, uh, guess what? Crichton winds up say, telling me, telling you, "Happy birthday!" Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you know what? I'm gonna also use this. Watching this film was like eating cake, where I just wanted more. <laughs> you know, it's like I wanted more, more to see at the very end of this film because of the way it leaves off, and I'm like, this has so much going for it. Everything. Yes, it's an indie <laughs> film, but I can see this going outside the indie territory where it becomes like an indie franchise in a sense. Thank you so much. Very well, well that's that's the that was part of my idea, you know. Uh I mean if if I get enough support and this movie is going well, um I have a sequel for this where I'm obviously trying to to get more of this. Uh, I was wanting to to develop something, but now close it completely. Um, but obviously, it has to have an ending. So I was, and and I think I don't know how. What what do you think about the spin? Do you like the spin? Like the yeah, end? I so, like the end sequence. To be honest okay. with you. Because so, I felt like, you know, you gave us enough to where we can speculate on what, yes, we get what happened in its full context. But at the same time, it's like, you make us wonder and question things and use our own imaginations, which is something that I like. Because mm -hmm. I love speculating. I love having a good time. It's like, what's going to happen with these characters? How do they change within time? And, and how much time is... And how much time is going to pass after this happens? What's going to happen to the husband? What's the repercussions of the mother, the daughter? What's going to happen to this family now? And most of the answers are already in there. It's just very high. So, And that's something I wanted to talk about too, though. Because I watched it again for the second time today. And I always pick up on something new, man. Like, here's the thing. It's hard as a director sometimes to actually, where we can actually have that rewatchability to where we can discover something new. Mm -hmm. And I got to give you props, man. Like, I didn't, there's like certain things in the film, I'm not going to spoil it, but that I picked up on the second time versus the first time, and it made that mo much more pleasurable for me, <laughs> Everything as a viewer, okay. and everything. You're very welcome, because I'm serious, man, you did an outstanding job with this, you met the challenges that, um, that were meant for during that time and everything, you went through a lot to get to where you are with this film, and I'm happy that it's doing well. I'm happy that you're able to make the film that you want and you don't have to go back and ask, uh, ask them, oops, my bad. I, I, I thought I had something, but I don't. And now is that tambalization of the fact this is happening. I went to the, like, for example, it's like, wait, I bet you were like this last night at the premiere. This is actually happening. I'm actually on the red carpet. I'm actually doing my premiere for my baby, for my movie that I did. And now I have everybody standing next to me, having my back. Not saying that they didn't have your back before, but it's like you're, it's this odd moment, like it feels surreal, where it's like, you know, it's just humbling because now you realize, hey, look, I found something, I got something now, and now it's finished, and I can't believe I made it this far. 
No, you know what is um, what is crazy is because um, I believe in 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 all of this project from the beginning. Obviously, because I did it is it was, I mean I did it because I believe in the project, but um, I don't know. I was not sure how many people was wanting to watch this. You know, so when you are on the screening of the premiere. And I was having 100 and I don't know, like 20 or 40 people, and and the, that finished, and I was like, do they like it or not? Or you know, it's a few seconds where you are like, what? It, I mean, what happened? Is good? Is bad? Is what? And and you see that it was a good reception, and they were having the questions, and you really see that they were really paying attention then it's like okay so it was worth it to go through all the hell to get there you know <laughs> exactly and i can actually imagine the pressure though i mean it's like okay red carpet check pre-game now it's time for the for, now it's time for the super bowl now it's actually time to go into the studio with all these other people it's like oh i'm hoping they like it what happens if they don't like it and everything and then the lights go off they're watching the movie and then you look around and you see the look on the crowd and like okay this was worth it in the end because yeah. i've created something that is special and people can relate to and people can say hey look diego did a fantastic job at this film he knows what this film is he knows his target audience for it he knows his ide this identity for the film and that's also another thing too is i feel like sometimes some films are misidentification of a film where they don't know the identity of it. It's like, oh, one minute you want to do psychological. Oh, never mind. They're going to do slasher now. Oh, never mind. They're going to do something else. <laughs> you went straight edge into this thing knowing what you wanted. And I loved it. I, you know the identity. You know the target audience. You know who it was geared towards. So fantastic job to you, Diego. You did a fantastic job. Thank you. Very uh, is the, the most... Um terrifying is like um the moments that you i mean i'm putting a, a demon in there and i'm putting some stuff that if it's not good is it can be really bad you know so it's a lot of risk so but also in the other side i want to take that risk because if it's not risky it's not as much enjoyable you know i was wanting to play with i was wanting to use kids i was wanting to do a stunts i was wanting to have a a real uh demon not a digital so and all of these things the visual effects all of that is adding up that is like i mean if if it's if something doesn't work everything falls so it it is uh, it is um, in like enjoyable to see when when finally everything came in the right way and it's like okay <laughs> you know like <laughs> right and you know what man another thing too is that I liked was how you use regular effects you blended it into the CGI and the special effect and to those effects. Because I can definitely tell that was real prosthetics that you used for for this demon to make it look so the way it can actually be real versus mm -hmm. a, anybody can react to a CGI uh, into CGI. But yeah. it's one thing to actually have physical totality and context re reacting to something that's right in front of you to make it more horrifying. And mm -hmm. I liked how you go on ahead, you go into details of how this thing sucks the soul out of people. I love the CGI on it. The practical effects was really good. I, I'm going to tell you, the visual effects were outstanding. And everything, Thank too. You. Thank Very you. Very welcome. And uh, you know what, man? I know that uh, you have to get back to uh, your son and everything, but I don't want to keep you too long. I don't want Kelly to come out here and say, why, <laughs> why do you have one here for an hour? And everything it's, it's way past his bedtime too you know so i don't want kelly to come on this channel and come all the way to mississippi to chew me out but i know that you have the trailer so yeah. i was thinking what we can do is we can close out with the trailer 
Okay. And do it that way if you want. But before we do that, I want to go on ahead and you know where can everybody follow you at if they want to follow you on social media and stuff like that. Okay, they can follow me on Instagram, Diego Silva A C E Diego D I E C O D I E G O <laughs> Silva S I L V A and A C E. Uh, on Facebook, you can find me uh, Diego Silva Cevedo, and my website is uh, Diego Silva Cevedo.com. And Hunting Souls is Hunting Souls movie everywhere. Okay. And guys, you can follow me on Facebook at Movie Lovers TV Lovers Night on over there, underneath the same brand name on Instagram and on Pinterest as well. If you would like to also donate to us, all you have to do is go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash movie lovers. Doing eight five to ten dollars over there, but guess what, guys? You don't have to do that. I understand the pandemic probably already put holes in your guys' pockets and stuff like that. But guess what? You guys can do for free: smash that subscribe button, smash that bell, break that bell to allow you guys to know when we have something new here at Movie Love Tonight that gives you notifications. Also, too, commenting below also helps. Liking this, uh, liking this uh, episode as well on YouTube. Also, too, go over ahead, go over to uh, our audio podcast rate individual episodes tell us what you think of those individual episodes on good pods good pods is basically social media for people that love listening to um listening to podcasts so that's one way to actually go on hand and support us give us a five-star rating on those individual episodes and everything too and guess what we can actually comment back and forth on good pods so basically it gives you interaction gives you a community base so go on ahead and do that of course rate us on spotify apple podcasts and google podcasts and all that you guys can get that with all your where you guys get your major podcast from. Of course, go on ahead and follow me underneath Movie Lovers Unit Zero on TikTok and Movie Lovers Unit, of course, on Twitter. If you want to reach out to me and want to be on the show if you're a sponsor, just go ahead and reach out to me at movieloversunite at gmail.com. And that's where everywhere that you can go ahead and follow me at tomorrow night. We are actually doing our Moon Night after show. So that's going to be edited tomorrow night after the show, It'll be out Friday. So go on ahead, check it out on Friday uh, Friday morning, 6 o'clock a.m. Central Time, 7 o'clock Eastern Time for that. And that's everything that we're doing here at Movie Love Tonight. And always until next time, guys, it's been real. It's been fun. I can't wait to do this again. And bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you for having me, John. You're very welcome, man. You're very welcome.